This is Spencer with The MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by writer-director Shauna Festi, mm -hmm. uh, director and writer of Boundaries, which is playing here at SIF, a uh, story of a family that's sort of estranged but has to come together due to life circumstances. Um, one of the first things that immediately occurred to me when watching this movie, and this is definitely not meant to be as any sort of slight to you, but uh -oh. when you look at like this cast <laughs> yeah. of so many phenomenal actors, like yeah. I'm, I'm like, I don't even know what I would do if I was the director coming yeah. into this. Like, I mean, you yeah. wrote the thing, so you have that input as well, but like, is it challenging? Does it make you want to raise your game because there's so many talented actresses like Vera Farmiga, Christopher Plummer, yada, 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 or is it, is it actually a little bit scary that you're like, what do I tell these people to do? They've been acting for so long. Like, Yeah. I mean, I think that's, it's always scary as a director, especially working with someone like Christopher Plummer, who you feel like, what could I possibly add <laughs> that he doesn't already know? Or, you know, will it be insulting if I give him sure, direction, yeah, yeah. you know? And is my direction going to be good enough compared to what, the, you know, the genius words that he's heard that have crafted all these amazing <laughs> performances? So that definitely goes through your head. But I think with actors like Vera and Chris, they were so open and they just love acting so much that they wanted the input. And, That's awesome. and it is a personal story to me. And this was my world and it was my father and it was kind of me. And so I, I did feel like the expert on set as far as the world. And I think they really respected that. That's fascinating. So I mean, I'm assuming that it's not like a literal beat for beat sort of telling of your life. But is there an element that's therapeutic as a writer and director to sort of be able to tell that story? And I don't know, say the things you always want to say, yeah. but were never able to yeah. or hear the things you were never able to hear and yeah. wanted to hear. What is that sort of like? Of course. I mean, I think it's 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 incredibly therapeutic just to be a writer or director because most of us have had childhood trauma. And when you're writing your you're fixing your childhood, right? Mm -hmm. You're repairing all these old wounds. Yeah. So I got to write that scene that I never had with my father. And then I got to give it a kind of happy ending when he comes back in the end. And so I think that's really therapeutic because also you find out you find out so much about yourself. Like even when I was writing this script, I was trying to get in touch with my own anger and I was finding it kind of as I was writing it. I mean, I, I don't know the sort of like spectrum of your family, but is there an element of it as you talk about this where like the different characters or maybe potentially different personalities, like the kid is trying yeah. to bond with the father, the mother is reticent to sort of embrace him again. So mm -hmm. these could be sort of like different pulls in you as you're sort of thinking about this relationship or something yeah. like that. I, I think exactly. You know, my, my family, my sister especially, was like, which one am I? Am I I'm her? And I'm like, you know, every one of these characters is a little bit of me. Mm -hmm. And then, yes, you're probably Kristen Schaal. Which um, <laughs> is pretty awesome. Like, yeah. It's the worst things that could definitely be. I know. I know. I think it's incredibly <laughs> flattering. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of me in the Lewis character, the kind of misfit that never fit in. I mean, when I was a kid, I was so shy. I didn't even speak until I was really about 12 I years can old. I empathize so much with that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so this is also, I think, you know, a way for a really super shy kid that never spoke up to have a voice, you know, directing and writing and telling my story. I, I've, I've definitely noticed a pattern in a lot of your work that you are either both the writer and director or you mm -hmm. collaborated on the writing. Is that something because you're more connected to the work or what exactly is it that's made you thus far? I mean, maybe it's just yeah. you haven't found the right project to not do it, but is there something about that that you're like, I understand this voice as a director easier yeah. or? Well, are you a writer? I mean, I've written reviews and stuff and okay. I find it agonizingly difficult. Well, prose is incredibly <laughs> difficult yeah. to write. I could never do it. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, when I'm a writer, I'm kind of a loner and I get, I write these worlds and these characters that become like my friends and my life. Mm. And sometimes I don't really leave the house. I just kind of talk with them. And so they become real people and people that I really care about and people that I want to kind of stay with them in their journey and kind of protect them. And if anyone's going to mess it up, I'm going to mess it up kind of thing. So, oh, um, yeah, I, I feel really, um, I feel really I hate the word blessed, but I guess I feel blessed that I can that write. Seems fair, yeah. Yeah, so that I can create the the worlds that I want to play in. I guess. One of the interesting, like, I mean, at least from my perspective, I don't know how actual directors think about it or whatever, but I sort of see there being three facets of filmmaking: mm -hmm. uh, the writing, the directing, yeah. and then the editing. Yeah. As somebody who does 
all of that. Yeah. How much do you mutate the story throughout all those processes? So, you know, you write the film, you get there on set and you're like, okay, I had yeah. this idea yeah. on the page and it's yeah. just not working. Yeah. I have to like spin this up now yeah. or you, you film it and then you get, like how much of that is different as somebody who does all three compared to somebody who might do just one? Because it, it, it seems like- Well, each like, one is terrifying, yeah. right? Each stage is terrifying. When you're writing something and it's not working and you're thinking, how do I fix this? This just, just isn't landing. I'm bored out of my mind in this moment. Like, how am I gonna readjust? When you're filming something that you've had in your head so clearly and it looks nothing like what was in your head and you don't know how to fix it or when an actor is giving a performance that you don't feel is truthful and you don't know how to adjust it in that very moment where 200 people could be looking at you. <laughs> or also, yeah, in the editing yeah. room where you see the first cut and you want to like blow your brains out because you're like, what, whose <laughs> what movie did I do? is this? What is it? And then it's slowly like, you know, I, I teach at AFI um, hmm. sometimes and I tell my students, the fellows, like it's terrifying. It's terrifying, especially in that moment when everybody is looking at you for an answer. And it's okay to say like, all right, I need a minute. I don't know the answer right now. Because what you have is you have an entire crew of brilliant people that you chose to work with you that are all there to support you. And being able to lean on them has gotten me through those moments. I think that's actually probably a fairly smart and level perspective about it. I think a lot of people feel that if they fail, it's a reflection on them. And yeah, so they yeah. try and block everyone from collaborating. And I think that is very apparent in a lot of films. So I think it definitely <laughs> comes through here how much you all work together to make this. Well, I think that's your like first family. fear. Like when I directed my first movie, I was like, I have to pretend like I know everything. Like I don't want every question I need to know the answer to. And especially as a woman, you're like, I need to know more yeah. than everybody. And yeah. I don't want to ever admit that I don't know anything, which is so crazy because no one knows everything and you don't. Yeah. And why are you then make a movie by yourself? Like edit, shoot it and do just one woman show. Yeah. You know, the reason, you know, in my first film I was working with John Bailey is because he's a brilliant cinematographer and he brought so much more than I could have figured out on my own. So I leaned on him tremendously. And in, in Boundaries, I le leaned on Sara an immense amount. Sara Mashara is our, our cinematographer. Paige, our, you know, production designer. All of them, I think I've learned, and after four films, finally, to really choose people that not only make you look better than you are and smarter, yeah. with the cast especially. Every single one of these cast members made me look like a better director, and crew as well. That's awesome. So obviously we should address the puppy in the yeah. room because that is a huge element of the yeah, movie, the animals. Yeah. It's such an interesting part of the story, but it also is like a very interesting logistical challenge. Oh my God. How, how much of it was like, on the page, you're like, this would be awesome. Yeah. And then you get there on set and you're like, I have eight dogs that yeah. I need to sort of wrangle. And yeah. this is just absolute chaos. Well, I think especially in the driving scenes where, well, there were two moments where I was like, what did I do? Like, why did I think I could do this? One was in the car, in the Rolls Royce, where we get all the actors in the car, you know, Chris, Vera, Lewis. Then we get five dogs in the car and it's like heating up like there's no tomorrow. Then we get like three animal wranglers in the car at their feet. And I'm like, the car's on fire at this point and we haven't even shot anything. And I'm thinking, what? And the dogs are all panting and smelling. And my poor actors are just looking at me like, what? How are we going to do this over and over again? And then also the, the worst one was when we were, oh shoot, I just totally lost my train of thought. I think there are so many, oh, in this particular movie, it's such a naturalistic film. I didn't need animals doing cartwheels and flips or it's not air butt, right? I needed very naturalistic performances for my animals. Which, which is great, but at the same time, you have so many, like I'm thinking like in my head, like, okay, casting this film, yeah. you guys slam dunk all these great actors. How complicated is it to cast like eight dogs or like five dogs to be in the car at the same yeah. time and know that they're not gonna all like freak out on each other? Cause I mean, I take three cats and put them together. Yeah. It's like absolute I know, chaos, I let know. alone in a small space. Well, we had a great animal wrangler, and she definitely helped us like create a group that kind of became a pack so they could travel together. But, you know, there's lots of scenes where there's just like four animals sleeping on the bed, which looks, you might not even notice it, but that was the hardest thing to do on set because every animal on set was like alert looking at the animal trainer waiting for a treat. 
And so we would have to, everybody would have to be completely quiet. The crew couldn't move. The actors would just lay in bed silently. We would place the animals on the bed. And then sometimes after 15, 20, 25 minutes, they would slowly like sit down. Then they would lay down. And then we'd be like, okay, action. And you'd start the film and just hope they all stayed there sleeping. I don't know, indie film, what you're shooting in 25 days, that's not the yeah, that's not. Choice. Yeah, you don't really have a lot of free time, so no. I imagine it's a very hectic experience. Yeah. Um, one of the other things that's sort of interesting with a film like this, from my perspective, is the line of comedy and mm -hmm. drama. Mm -hmm. Because even just with Vera Farmiga, like with Bates Motel, yeah, there's such a like a fine line that you could see this performance easily skewing mm -hmm. towards a more intense, dramatic thrower yeah. type thing. But how difficult is it for you to keep that line where it's it's still light, it's got funny, yeah. but it also has that heart without skewing yeah. too much into like an overhanded drama? Totally. Um, I think that's just a, a line that I've kind of, first of all, it's something I've always aspired to as a filmmaker. Hal Ashby was my favorite all-time filmmaker. Um, and he navigates that tone perfectly, right? The kind of funny, sad, with brilliance. And with Vera... You know, I purposely didn't cast a comedic actress because I knew there were so many scenes where she would have to really deliver some dramatic moments. But in my childhood, this is a story that's totally close to home. My father, who has been in and out of prison my whole life, married six times, six different kids, you know, animals, women, children love him. We laughed through that pain, you know. He made me laugh like no one else. Mm. I lost him in June, so I'm oh, using past I'm tense. But... Um, you know, it was when I channeled him and when I thought about him, I could really think about the kind of funny, sad tone I wanted to to, to have in the film. That's, that's an, it's interesting to think, just at least from your perspective of how this all sort of worked for you. What is it like for your family to sort of yeah. see this? Like, I, I mean, everyone has probably different relationships yeah. with different people. Was everyone able to sort of see it with the the earnest sweetness or whatever yeah. that you meant with it? Or, or like, is it difficult for you to be like, hey, I got this film? Yeah, like, yeah. Like, no, I mean, I was scared to show it to my father. You know, I really didn't. Oh, wow, he saw it. No, he didn't. Oh, he died okay. before he uh -huh. saw it. That's too bad. Um, but I, I was scared to show it to him. Even He was alive when we were shooting it because he's in the movie. Um, really? Yeah, he's in the montage when they're dr dealing drugs, and he has a handlebar mustache, oh, and he's wearing like a... Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, he's, he's doing a drug deal with Chris oh, Plummer. That's awesome. Um, but I was terrified to show it to my family. I mean, when my sister saw it, she just cried for like two hours because it just brought up all the stuff that um, she... we. Since we all had different moms, all of my brothers and wow. sister, yeah, we all had different moms, we, um, we weren't always aware that we all had this incredible shared experience. So even when my brother saw it at South by Southwest, he said, I had no idea you were feeling those same things about dad that I was. So I think for them, it was actually really healing, but definitely not like a, a very different movie experience for them. It almost makes it seem more difficult when you say it like that because it's like, okay, now are you writing this personal thing mm -hmm. that you're working through? But at the same time, you're like, let me throw some comedy on yeah, here. And like, yeah, how, like yeah. how difficult is it to be like, I'm working through this thing, but I also at the same time want to make a joke out of this. Yeah, like, it seems yeah. like that's like a double difficult sort of thing to try and come up with. Well, I mean, I, I once again, I just go back to my dad. Those moments where like, I mean, this is a totally weird, bizarre story, but this is just kind of it. When he was in prison, he used to send me a Valentine's Day card every single year. And he was in prison when I was at UCLA, and I thought, well, I guess this year I'm not getting a Valentine's Day card. One came in the mail, and it was this hideous card, and it had this little guy on it, and it was like, think of a number one through ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then you opened it, and it said, wrong. Now take off your clothes. And like I read it and was like, what the fuck? This is from my dad. This is so disgusting. And then underneath he wrote, sorry, Bean. I had to trade uh, three weeks of laundry duty and 12 boxes of cigarettes for this card, but I wanted you to have it. So once again, it was like the, oh, cringing, funny, sad, but ultimately very touching. It, it, there, there, that is a very true sort of uh, representation of kind of what is going on in yeah. a lot of this film, that it does have that sort of sweet and funny and dramatic all at the same time. Um, what is it that you sort of look at this film and you're sort of like most proud of? It's, I mean, there's so much going on in it. That's so much, like the, 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 the family legitimately feels 
like a family. Like there's so many things in it that mm -hmm. I think are, are fascinating and amazing. What are you most proud of as a writer and director? I think I'm most proud of the cast. Mm. Yeah. I mean, there's just such, I picture them like if you went to a party and you saw all of them, it would be like the weirdest party ever because you'd be like, how are all these people at the same party? They're all so different and odd, but they're all so amazing on their own. And yet it sort of, there's the puzzle somehow. Yeah. We together. thought like, is this just going to be so weird it works? Or is this just going to be too weird and everybody's like, what movie are we watching? But I think for me, it's so weird that it works. And it's also my dad, you know, in my life. My godfather was Tony the Ant, and there was Blonde Joey, and I was hanging out with all these guys that I shouldn't, and they were all kind of these over-the-top characters. So, and my dad had friends from all walks of life. So casting, I was kind of, I went from Peter Fonda to Chris Lloyd, and that felt totally right, you know? And it's, the cast is just a phenomenal collection yeah. of people. Um, so the film is Boundaries. It yeah. comes out June 22nd. June 22nd, okay. yeah. Um, Definitely worth checking out. Amazing. It's got some Seattle vibe going on, which yeah, I, I tried. I think you filmed in Vancouver. Is that correct? We did. So. Yeah, we drove through, though. We drove yeah. through Seattle. So uh, definitely some Pacific Northwest <laughs> love for yeah. those who like that. Um, great film. Wish you the best of luck Thank with you. it. Thank you. Can't wait to see what you do next. Oh, cool. Thanks Thank so, so much. Don't even try to buy the sound style. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.